here's what's coming up on your horizon. Well, more heat and rain at the completely wrong time is withering wheat farmers' hopes for this year's crop. Our Andy Barth heads out west to see how farmers are reacting to projections of drier years to come. It's one of the worst we've experienced. Uh, this will be my 45th wheat harvest, and uh, I had a seven bushel once with a hail, but I think this one will be real close to that amount. Well, while this year's wheat yield looks to be greatly reduced, there's still plenty of work to be done, and we get a glimpse into the annual wheat harvest, courtesy of filmmaker Conrad Weaver. The tenacity of the farmers and the people in agriculture is amazing. Unparalleled in my book, that they take these risks knowing that there may not be anything to cut, and yet they do it anyway. And we'll end our day with an old-fashioned whistle-stop train ride, all to honor a century of service in this week's Oklahoma Standard. Stay with us for Oklahoma Horizon. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education. Oklahoma's investment in career tech provides more than nationally recognized technology education and training. It produces solid financial returns for the state's economic future. Oklahoma Career Tech, elevating our economy. And the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping good people grow good things. And now, from the Career Tech Studios in Stillwater, here's your host, Rob McClendon. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us here on Horizon. Well, crop adjusters have been busy this spring, settling up with farmers hoping to collect on wrecked fields. A late spring freeze proved to be the last nail in the coffin of a wheat crop that struggled through months of drought. Joining me now is our Andy Barth from the heart of Oklahoma wheat country. Well, Rob, I'm here in Cherokee, Oklahoma, where on a normal year, the wheat would already be well above my knee. Unfortunately, now it's only part way up my calf. Yet, producers are still trying to salvage a crop, despite Mother Nature's devastating toll this past year. As the wind blows through northwestern Oklahoma, this year's wheat crop is dry. Here at Cherokee, at this farm, I've had 5.8 inches. And we're typically a 31-inch uh, rainfall area. Kenneth Fales, a wheat farmer in northwestern Oklahoma, says this year's wheat crop is one for the books. It's one of the worst we've experienced. Uh, this will be my 45th wheat harvest, and uh, I had a seven bushel once with a hail, but I think this one will be real close to that amount. In a good year, Oklahoma will produce about 150 million bushels of wheat. But due to the terrible growing conditions this year, farmers expect to harvest only 62 million bushels, the worst statewide crop since the 1950s, which may cause grocery store prices to change. The market will react if there's not very many bushels while the you know, supply and demand kicks in there. So it could go up in price. And if the drought isn't bad enough, a late freeze hit Oklahoma wheat farmers at the worst possible time. We had one on the 15th of April that hurt us the worst. It took quite a while for that to show effect on the wheat. Uh, it just killed some tillers. Uh, those two factors, the drought and the freeze, has limited our production here drastically. And down the road is a field so bad, Fails is turning to drastic measures. This is the third field we've been in today, and this one is the least productive in my estimation. So we're cutting down wheat hay to make round bales for cattle. But not all is lost for wheat farmers. Fail says crop insurance will once again save the day. Assuming that the price the farmer would receive through the federal crop insurance is $8.20 a bushel, and that would be a good amount of income leaving producers hoping for a better tomorrow. I say a farmer's got to be optimistic or he can't survive phys uh, mentally. And yes, one day closer to rains, talked of lots of times in drought. And it just helps one to see that it's going to rain sometime. We don't know when, but it will happen. And it keeps you going. 
Well, now aside from a weak harvest, producers are also concerned about extremely dry soil conditions. When there's absence of water in the soil, high soil erosion occurs, causing major dust storms, leaving some wondering if a second dust bowl is on the horizon. So exactly what does this mean economically? Well, Rob, in 2013, Oklahoma produced 5% of the nation's overall wheat crop. And when you put a dollar amount on that, it's about three quarters of a billion dollars. Yet this year, with a likely 40% drop in bushels harvested, that economic value will be less, but very important here in rural Oklahoma. All right. Thank you so much, Andy. You're welcome, Rob. Now, when we return, the head of Oklahoma's Wheat Commission joins me here in studio to talk about a crop that remains a staple for Oklahoma's rural economies. You're watching Oklahoma Horizon, featuring some of the good things that are happening in the great state of Oklahoma. Well, joining me now in studio is the executive director of Oklahoma's Wheat Commission, Mike Schulte. Well, Mike, give us just some idea how important Oklahoma's wheat crop is to Oklahoma's overall economy. The Oklahoma wheat crop is the largest plant commodity crop for the state. Uh, we generally plant anywhere from 5.5 to 5.6 million acres in the state uh, and generally harvest around 3.5 to 4 million acres uh, when harvest does come. Uh, this year though those numbers do look pretty dismal and uh, we're hoping that we harvest somewhere around 3.3 million acres. Mm -hmm. Now as you said this is projected to be the smallest crop what we could have in over 50 years. What kind of or what type of impact could that have on the rural parts of our state? Uh, you know, looking at just numbers, uh, worst crop was 1957 at 43 million bushels. Right now, USDA has us estimated at 62.7 million bushels. If you look at 2012 and the economic impact of what our industry made for the state, uh, over the five-year average back then, it was somewhere around $784 million. Uh, this year, we're looking at an economic impact of $378 million. So it is going to have a, an impact to the overall state economy somewhere around 400 million dollars uh, something that you know we we realize is is not going to be good for Oklahoma yeah and I, I know you know you've seen this I've seen this wheat is a tough old crop and you can never completely count it out even in the worst conditions so there will be people making a crop this year uh, there are uh, some some bright spots in the state they are few and far in between uh, we just really couldn't get over the hurdles of the significant drought that we've had this past year uh, you look around uh, I'd say south of Lawton there's an area down by Walters and Temple where they did get some moisture in the last month and uh, has allowed for grain fill and I think down there there's potential maybe for some 30 bushel wheat um, and along the 81 highway corridor in the state uh, as you get on up into um, El Reno areas uh, and Okarchi and Enid but uh, then again it's just the last five days we've had real extreme high temperatures and I think uh, has done nothing really good for the state and I think we also have to be cognizant of the fact that we've got five days of rain here in the upcoming forecast and uh, I'm afraid at this point in time where the wheat is ripe in the southern part of the state that that could affect us on test weight. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Now if you listen to climatologists some of them warn that the drought that we've seen could be just the first of, of more to come. You know, from an industry perspective, how do you prepare for a hotter, drier Oklahoma? Well, we continue to work on that with our research development at Oklahoma State University. Uh, if you look at the mesonet uh, in the Panhandle region still today, there has been uh, over 102 days with some areas that have received less than a quarter of an inch of rain. And I'd say that this wheat crop uh, in most areas uh, from planting date till now have, has made it on around anywhere from two to three inches if they did get a lot of rain in those areas. And you look at that and think that that crop can survive on that. It is a tough plant, but we continue to work on the drought tolerant traits and the nitrogen efficiency genes with the wheats that we are releasing through Oklahoma State University, and we're hopeful that we are able to get those to producers to make them more competitive. But it all still comes down to having moisture at the end of the day, and that's, that's the one thing that we're most hopeful for. So will consumers see any effect to this smaller crop? Uh, you know, that's a good question, Rob. Uh, sometimes it does have a trickle down effect. Uh, world supplies are really strong right now. So um, although we're seeing negative impacts with the crop here in the United States and having uh, low supplies here in the U.S. worldwide, we are going to have a large abundance. And that's what's predicted for the 2014, 2015 year. Now, if that potentially changes and we see a drought in another region when that crop is coming, coming in, then that could have a potential effect for the consumer. Okay. Well, Mike, we certainly wish you the best here and hope, hope this year's harvest is, is better than projected. Thanks so much. Thanks, Rob. Still to come on Oklahoma Horizon, in this week's Oklahoma Standard, a centennial worthy of a century of service. But first, 
a thousand miles of harvesting wheat. Well, each year a labor of love begins in Central Texas and goes all the way to the Canadian border. It's the annual wheat harvest and one that is documented in a new film called The Great American Wheat Harvest. Elk City's Dan Meisner is one of the custom cutters featured in the film and attended its Oklahoma premiere. The reward is huge. Um, the people that I meet, the people that I've gotten to know from Oklahoma all the way to the Canadian border. You know, I've, I've got friends and family that span 1,200 miles, and I think that's what makes it all worthwhile. Now, Miser's work is vital to our food supply, and one that filmmaker Conrad Weaver spent more than a year documenting. The backbone of the American way is our agriculture, is our farming. There's a lot of people who think bread comes from a grocery store. They don't know that bread comes from wheat. I think consumers need to understand that the products they purchase at the grocery store is a result of a lot of people working together. There is an entire network of producers and workers and employees and manufacturing facilities like this that are all working in tandem to make sure that we continue to produce the very best, healthiest food we can. We're putting everything we have on the line every year. There's people who go out here and risk everything to put food on their table. You never know what's gonna happen with the weather. The cost of the equipment. The machinery. The stress of not knowing where you're going. Dealing with the government. There's a lot of hard work and a lot of sweat, a lot of tears, a lot of fun that goes into that loaf of bread. And a farmer needs his wheat out in a timely way, so that's where the traveling custom harvester comes in. Wheat ripens 20 to 30 miles a day northward. You could cut somewhere for a week and then you would have to load up and move two to 300 miles to catch up with the harvest again. And that's what we do. We hopscotch our way to wherever it takes us. Our goal is always to be home by Thanksgiving. Uh, I would say half the time we make it home and half the time we don't. It's a way of life like no other. It's just like watching a musical or an opera in the field. We harvest the crops that feed the world. That's what makes it all worthwhile. Well, Conrad Weaver is the movie's creator, and I was able to visit with him at the film's Oklahoma premiere. So, Conrad, why'd you decide to do this? Well, to be honest, four years ago, I was following a blog, All Aboard Harvest, but out a blog. And I was reading the blog, and it's actually my wife's idea. Mm -hmm. she, was, she was reading it over my shoulder one day, and she said, that would make a great documentary. And I said, you know what? That's a great idea. And that was four years ago, and here we are today with a finished product. So how many miles did you travel with these custom cutters? Uh, in 2013, when it was the bulk of my time on the road and in the air, I traveled over 100,000 miles. That's not counting in 2011. I did some traveling. 2012, I did a bunch of traveling. So I'm guessing 120, 130,000 miles. Mm -hmm. Give our viewers that they're, they're closest they get to wheat is maybe the bread in, in the grocery store aisle, what it's like to be a custom cutter today. Well, to be a custom cutter, you have to have, you have, to have a lot of guts because you take a lot of risks. And you, you, okay, you're buying a combine that costs half a million dollars, and most of them buy a new one every year. They basically trade in the old model, buy a new one. They have tractors, they have grain carts, they have semi-trucks, they have campers that they live in. And so in about May, they head south with all their equipment and they go down to Texas. And they're basically in their RVs and in their, in their campers from May until late September or even into October as they go into fall crops. But for wheat, they're in, they're in there all summer long. Yeah, I know sometimes here we may have uh, uh, some bad thunderstorms and things are too wet to cut and then the custom cutters will move on. So it's really a hit or miss kind of proposition, is it not? That's a huge challenge. In fact, there was one custom cutter, and you'll see it in the film, who was in South Dakota. And they had 15,000 of acres of wheat that, that was in front of them to cut. And they were sitting there for a month. They'd go out every day and about 2 o'clock they'd get a thunderstorm. And so that just put moisture you know, on the, on the wheat, and the wheat's got to be dry, it's got to be 13% humidity or less uh, for them to cut. And so they were sitting there for over a month. 
And that made him anxious because their farmer up in North Dakota was calling saying, hey, my wheat up here is getting pretty you know, ready to cut. And so, so sometimes they have to move on. Sometimes they're like, you know what, we can't miss that, this guy up north because you know, we're sorry, Mr. Farmer, but we're going to have to move on. And so now that farmers are stuck with his wheat sitting uh, and he has to maybe call another custom cutter to come in and cut that wheat. Now you're certainly no neophyte around agriculture, but as I've learned every time I go out, there's plenty to learn. What did you learn doing this film? What I learned was the tenacity of the farmers and the people in agriculture is amazing. Unparalleled in my book, that they take these risks knowing that there may not be anything to cut, and yet they do it anyway. And they go back year after year doing the same thing and taking those risks. So watching this, this is truly not just an agriculture story, but a people story as well. Absolutely. You know, I started out thinking beautiful scenery, big equipment, all that fun stuff, which is great, and it's in the film. But to make a good story, it's about the people. And that's what I really fell in love with. I fell in love with the people. And I made some of my best friends. In fact, one of them here a couple weeks ago, she called me and she was like, when are we going to get to see you again? You know, what excuse are we going to have for you to come out to see us again? And it really, it, it, that's true. I, I made my, some of my best friends now are on Harvest or out here in the Midwest. And so it really truly is a people story. Yeah, and some of the visuals are absolutely stunning. Did you have a favorite place that you got to shoot in? You know, I think my favorite place of all was when I was in Montana. There's a place there that is way back in the middle of nowhere. Is that there's a field that you have to drive 15 miles out of town down this dirt lane to get to it. And it's overlooking the Judith River Basin. And there's a wheat field right on the edge and it drops down over a thousand feet down to the river. And I sat there for two hours one day by myself while the, while the wheat harvesters were going back to get some more equipment. And I was out there by myself. Not a sound to be heard except the wind rustling in the, in the wheat and in the trees. Amazing place. And you'll see that, that place in the film. So what do you want someone that sees this film What's the takeaway? What do you want them to think about? I want them to, to say what a friend of mine said after he saw the film. This gentleman lives in, in the city. He hasn't been on a farm. He doesn't know much about agriculture at all. He came away and said, Conrad, he said, the next time I buy a loaf of bread, I'll, I will know a little better where this loaf of bread came from and how it got to this shelf. And that's exactly the reaction I want people to, to, to understand and to, to get out of this film. I want them to walk away saying, wow, there's a lot that goes into the food that I put on my table. And there's a lot of people who take risks to provide this food for me. Well, oh, Conrad, a great piece of work, something, something that everyone should see. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Well, while Oklahoma farmers may well be harvesting less this year, some will still be donating part of this year's crop to buy books for schools. The Oklahoma Farm Bureau is sponsoring a program called Bushels for Books, which allows farmers to donate a few bushels from their wheat harvest to purchase bushel baskets of agricultural-based books to be placed in Oklahoma schools. Starting in August, the teachers will be given an opportunity to apply for these new textbooks. Want to share something you've seen here today? Well, all of our episodes are streaming on our YouTube channel at Oklahoma Horizon TV or you can subscribe to our weekly free podcast on iTunes. Well, in this week's Oklahoma Standard, we recognize an organization that turns 100 this year. The Cooperative Extension Service in the United States is marking its 100th anniversary. And in Oklahoma, they're celebrating with a trip back in time. As Lyndall Stout shows us, in the early days of Extension, agricultural agents traveled by train in order to get important information out to producers and farm families. A day of nostalgia for the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service, perhaps even the whole state, when one really considers 100 years of serving farmers, families, and entire communities. To mark the occasion, Extension went back to its roots on the railroad. Extension always has to use the technology that's available. And back in those days, the quickest way to get around the state and to carry some of the equipment and demonstrations that we had 
was to use a train, and the train companies cooperated with that because agriculture is one of their big customers. And so they allowed free passage on the trains. Extension agents would ride those trains in the early 1900s, and when they would arrive, at times hundreds of people would be on hand to get the latest information from the USDA and from what was then Oklahoma A&M College, often called a county fair on wheels. It was a big deal. In fact, they say uh, lots of times they shut down the courthouse and the school and the post office and everything and uh, just shut the town down for a couple hours and everybody went down to the depot where the train came in and stood around and waited for, for the program that the extension folks were delivering. So when the train rolled into the rock and rail yard at Wellston recently. This laboratory on wheels contains all the latest and greatest in early 20th century family living and farming techniques. That's what today's extension educators from across Oklahoma recreated in a native pecan grove. Educational lessons for everyone, from livestock and crops to gardening and insects, home and family to 4-H and much more. The vintage mixed in with the most modern day all to show the impact and reach of extension through the years and also what lies ahead. What we're wanting to do here is just help, really help kids understand how technology is going to be driving a lot of our careers in the future, especially in natural resources. And did someone say food? Ch molten lava chocolate cake and uh, deluxe potatoes with a crispy topping that are like twice baked potatoes, they're just yummy. Dutch oven cooking just like the early days. They last forever. They're seasoned like Teflon if you take care of them, and they hold the heat a long time. And Martha Washington even will, mentioned them in her will and specified who hers went to. So they've been uh, valued by people who cook in the outdoors particularly for a long time. Really a revitalization of people liking to learn this skill. And we're teaching a lot of kids to do this now with the outdoor 4-H projects. Speaking of the younger set, they're especially fascinated with the older ways. 12-year-old Hannah Thompson sums it up best. I'm going to tell my friends that I really had a fun day. It was really awesome. Just looking back at the past and seeing from the old days and seeing to the future that I might teach my grandkids. And if the past century is an indicator, Cooperative Extension will be right there with Hannah and her friends, teaching, extending knowledge, and changing lives well into the future. Extension Centennial celebrations are happening throughout the U.S. and across Oklahoma, honoring those 100 years of harnessing all the research and know-how of land-grant institutions like Oklahoma State University and using it to help people live the very best lives possible, which makes the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service this week's Oklahoma Standard. You can keep up with us throughout the week. Just head to okhorizon.com where you can see more of any of our stories, read our reporters' behind-the-scenes blogs, see what others are saying about us on Twitter, and face the facts with our regular updates. So reach out and touch us anywhere and anytime. Next time on Oklahoma Horizon, merging rural Oklahoma onto the broadband fast lane. People are so excited about it. They're wanting their neighbors to sign up. They're they're, um, they're wanting their friends and they're talking about it everywhere. So it's been a great uh, community support. Plus, we'll tell you whether Oklahoma is a maker or a taker state. An Oklahoma show for the heartland, Oklahoma Horizon. Well, even as rains rolled through the state last week, the drought continues to take its toll. The latest victim, this year's wheat crop. And while most growers are protected by tax-supported crop insurance, the land they farm isn't. In those farmers' fields, there's a growing concern that the longer this drought lasts, the harder it will be to recover from it. We're starting to see dust storms similar to those in the 1930s. And while modern agriculture has implemented new conservation practices since then, if you have long enough periods without rain, fields will blow and dust storms will cloud the sky. 
We are four years into what is proving to be an unrelenting drought in western Oklahoma, the Texas Pandale, and parts of Kansas and Colorado. The same area hit hardest in the 1930s. And when you compare climatological data from then to now, what you will see is that less rain has actually fallen in the last four years than fell in the driest days of those dirty 30s. The ramifications from that may not only wreck farmers' fields, but also change the very economic landscape of parts of rural Oklahoma. And we will continue to watch this story as the spring rains turn into our summer heat. I'm Rob McClendon. Thanks for watching. See you back here next week. Horizon is made possible by the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education and the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping good people grow good things. Copies of today's show are available on our website, okhorizon.com. Thank you for watching Oklahoma Horizon.